right, well, we'll start with the, the least interesting but easiest question. For people who aren't familiar with it, tell us a little bit about what Future Man is about. Go for it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, you know, it's about the illusion of control. <laughs> um, no, it is about a kind of janitor who is stuck uh, in a kind of job he doesn't like, in a life he doesn't like, who's at home with his parents. Kind of the only thing he does that he's remotely special at is play this video game. Um, best in the world at, beats the video game, uh, and unbeknownst to him, it's actually a training simulator sent back from the future, sent back from the future, sent from the future, um, <laughs> looking to uh, recruit an elite warrior, because people from that time think that video games are training simulators, not games. And so it's kind of two fish out of water stories. It's like two warriors who think they have a, an ultra warrior, and then it's two people from the future trying to fit into present day. What did you guys think about this premise of someone getting herpes causes the end of the world? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we loved it. <laughs> we conceived it, so we loved it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, we we're just trying to look for the silly uh, as possible <laughs> end to humanity, and I think herpes <laughs> found ill. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's addressed in such a humorous way, but are you worried at all that by like vilifying herpes, you're like adding to the stigma of it? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I'm not worried about it. And you know what, as someone who, I don't know if I should be admitting this, but it's, yeah, I'm going to break the stigma. As someone who himself has herpes, I don't feel uh, that way at all. Yeah. Herpes shaming. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag herpes shaming. <laughs> So with video games being such a big part of the show, are you guys, were you guys, you know, video game geeks growing up? Was it a part of your What's your life? The pilot makes a bigger deal of the video game thing. It's really more of a jumping off point than the video game comes back and works its way back in in interesting ways, but the show isn't really rooted as much in gamer culture as it is in kind of this weird sci-fi action, you know, it borrows a little bit from just movies and TV shows that we watched growing up, um, and a lot of genre tropes and like hopefully having some fun with those. But we don't really live that much in the video game world. But yeah, we were video game fans. <laughs> but it was more Atari, it wasn't like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're older than we are. Dig dug it you guys mentioned on the panel that you worked really hard to make sure that the time travel made sense. So was there anything you wanted to do with the story that you couldn't because it wouldn't have worked with the timeline? So many yeah, things. Yeah, so many things. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to bring them. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, we really wanted to, yeah. We, we got into, like, not fights, but we got into, like, arguments about how, you know, people, we were, you know, because we're jumping back and forth through time, and when you come back, you kind of created a new reality, and it's like, oh, we would get into, like, big arguments about, oh, well, that wouldn't be all, like, you know, obviously all theoretical, yeah. but that's impossible. There's no way he would have a limp. You know? <laughs> like, the whole conversation's impossible. <laughs> um, yeah. We're, We're still having arguments yes. about it. Yeah, yeah, it's an ongoing thing. <laughs> We think it will pass, hopefully, the sniff test of, like, oh, we did our work and, and there is integrity to it. Like, that's all we want. Every every single time travel TV show, every single time travel movie has inherent paradoxes. There's nothing you can do about them, but like we feel like we're consistent in our paradoxes. And when we do change things up, there's like a good kind of Doc Brown explanation for it. So we feel like we've kind of covered our bases. So how's the show going to handle Ellen Henry's process? Well, um, we, uh, when we were pretty deep into production when she passed away and the story had kind of moved off of their parents, Glenn and uh, Ed Begley play Josh's parents, we kind of moved away from their kind of involvement in the story and had jumping around in time and we were in different places. So we kind of, not we hadn't wrapped her, but we were close to wrapping her. So there was kind of a natural you know, way to kind of write her out of the show without it feeling like something needed to be addressed in a, you know, in a kind of hand-fisted or, or forced way. Did you guys think, um, so like in the show, having video game violence in real life like highlights how violent it is. Did you guys mean to kind of comment on like how violent video games were? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and for Josh's character who is playing these violent games, it's totally like desensitized to it and to have him when he sees it up close and there's blood and people are getting killed in front of him, like he just does not have the real stomach for it. But yeah, we were, we were definitely trying to comment on that. But it was more, you know, it was more through the lens of what the 
these futuristic people, the circumstances that they live with. Them. You guys put together a great cast for the show. How, uh, how challenging was that? Was it, was it easy to get them involved? Was it, was it tricky to figure out who you wanted to play who? Um, no, it wasn't too tricky. Uh, you know, we auditioned a lot of people, and, and not Josh. Josh uh, signed on pretty early, but um, you know, Derek and Eliza just like jumped out as as just like the clear kind of best people to to play the, those two characters. Um, so it wasn't really that challenging. It, it, uh, it just worked out, and they're fantastic on the show. The oh, hold on, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so uh, genre stuff lends itself to comedy really well, but it's a tricky balance. So how, how have you guys kind of worked the, the time travel with the comedy and keeping it all together and running smoothly? Well, I think we wanted to just ground the show. Uh, maybe the, the kind of hallmark of, you know, Seth and Evan's, you know, work in, in these kinds of movies and that we all really agreed with and wanted to embrace was you know, making the stakes real, making the emotions real, making the danger and the peril and everything feel real. Um, and then like, the comedy comes out of the severity of the situation. It was just really finding at no point that we want the show to be goofy or spoofy or anything like that. There's no parody or anything. It's all like a sincere embrace of can we do a legitimately interesting, fun, like genre show that is just shot through with a lot more comedy than genre, you know, stuff is usually shot through. But even Back to the Future is funny, but it's more like light comedy. This is more like kind of hard comedy. Um, but really trying to do the genre, like respect the genre. Thank you so much.